Today we're working on uh, doing a beacon installation with the Digifarm VBN network on a case tracker with a case 372 receiver. Um, some of the benefits of the, the beacon with the Digifarm network are uh, the ease of installation. Um, with the beacon here hooked up to a Trimble receiver basically, we just plug it into the port B plug on uh, the 372. Just like that, push it in so it locks and the installation is complete. Um, some of the other benefits that we have with this, with the Beacon being a Bluetooth device, it pairs up with uh, an iPad that uh, we utilize your existing data plan rather than having to pay extra for a data plan on an annual basis. Um, some of the other benefits, not only with the Beacon, but paired up with the Digifarm network, is the, the stability and reliability of the network and the, the fact that we have individual mount points based on the receiver type that you're using. So this Trimble receiver is gonna log into a different mount point in our network and actually get corrections that are specifically for this brand of receiver compared to say an Ag Leader or a Topcon receiver, those are gonna log into a different place as well. So we've got our beacon installed. We'll go ahead and install this back on the tractor and go through some of the button presses in the cab. So now that we've got our 372 installed, uh, we're gonna start out with our iPad and we're gonna go ahead and power the tractor on and uh, the beacon will power on with the receiver. And then uh, you're gonna go into your Bluetooth settings on your iPad and you should see the beacon V3.0 um, with the serial number of your beacon and uh, we can go ahead and connect to it. Once it's connected, we can go home and go into our Digifarm app. And the first thing that we'll notice up here in the top left-hand corner is that the Beacon V3.0 is already showing up in there. And it's green down here in the corner, which means the Beacon is connected within the app. So the next step we're gonna do is the receiver type is the next one down. We will go in and select Trimble RTCM for these Trimble receivers. Um, we also have the option of Trimble CMR. If there is uh, some of the older receivers don't allow an RTCM input, so we use the uh, CMR input for those. Any of the newer receivers, we'll set it up to Trimble RTCM. Uh, we'll input our username and password. Now there's another step when we utilize the Trimble RTCM. We need to go down to the bottom to the advanced page of the iPad and about halfway down here we'll see this beacon iOS. We want to make sure that beacon is selected. Uh, this is going to be for Trimble 372 receivers and basically what that does is gives us the ability to see live data from the receiver on uh, the network side um, rather than utilizing the position from the iPad. So once we have that set up we can go ahead and set the iPad aside and we will go through our setup on the 370 or on the Pro 700, uh, the 372 setup. The first thing that we're going to want to do is go into our toolbox and whatever correction source you had selected previously, we're going to go ahead and select RTK. Um, correction level, we want that set to Ag GPS radio and we also want to ensure that XFIL is enabled. We'll come into the XFIL setup. And the only thing that you have to change in here is the datum select. And we wanna make sure that that is set to NAD83. And then we'll go ahead and hit okay. Um, the rest of this stuff should populate with uh, what you already have in, in here uh, for the GPS receiver mount location. So then we're gonna go back in and we're gonna to go to diagnostics. And the tabs at the bottom, you'll tab all the way over to the right and there'll be an RDI tab. And this is where we're going to actually program the 372. So from this main screen on the RDI, we're going to press the right arrow twice to configuration. We'll press the down arrow once, and then we're going to go to the right over to the port C config. Um, we'll go ahead and press the down arrow once, and we want to make sure that port C out is turned on and port B flow is off, which it generally defaults to. We'll press the down arrow once, and this is, how, uh, this is how the receiver defaults on port C. So what we're gonna do is press the right arrow once and we're gonna change that top line from TSIP to RTCM. And then we want the 38.4 baud rate. Um, the bottom line needs to read 8N1 and the bottom line needs to say NEMA instead of TSIP. 
So we'll change that to NEMA and then we can go ahead and press enter. Now we also want to hit the down arrow again and this is our NEMA output. So these are the, the NEMA messages that are getting outputted um, to our servers, which the only one we want turned on is GGA. And as long as it's capitalized, it's turned on. So we're gonna press the right arrow until this GSA down here is flashing and hit the up or down arrow to make that lowercase and then press enter. And then we'll hit the down arrow again and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna make everything on the NEMA 2 screen lowercase and then we'll go down again to check the NEMA 3 screen. Once we have all of this uh, lowercase in here, we can press the down arrow once, make sure that our NEMA output is set as low as possible. Um, and then we can press the escape button three times to get back to the main RDI screen. So once we have that done, we'll come back to the iPad and basically all you have to do is hit start.